time, I'm like, this, this sounds like a good deal. You know, let's, let's get married. She's like, yeah, we get this kind of money. They pay us for this. They pay us for that. So we got married. And then um, time went on. We went to Newport News, Virginia. I ended up having a kid and everything. And of course, I was young. I wasn't mature. So I, I was stepped out. I started, you know, coming home late, got arrested down there. And then um, eventually we, we part ways. I moved on and then I came back to New York, still down with the crew, whatever. I was in the Bronx at this time. Um, I got picked up for a gun. So I got locked up. I had, a, I had purchased a gun in Virginia and brought it to New York. And I got caught hanging out, whatever. Uh, I ended up beating the gun. And I thought it was luck. I was like, yo, that's crazy. I beat the gun. But not knowing, now I know it was the Lord's doing. Lord Jesus. And um, so eventually I got my life back together in New York. I started um, to talk to someone. And, um, you know, we hit it off pretty well. And then eventually um, we were dating for like about five years. I ended up proposing to her. And then... Um, we got engaged, I posted in front of her whole family, got the house, the picket finch, life was good. And then one day, <laughs> one day I was on TikTok and I was drinking and I was strolling on my phone and I came across this fella and he was, bah, 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 come back the Bible. And I was like, so I was like, who is this dude? So I went to the comments, because they didn't put his name. So I was like, dag. So I ended up liking the video. A few days later, another video popped up. And then I got his name. They're like, that's Pastor Gino Jennings. So I YouTubed him. Boom. All the videos popped up. I'm like, oh, OK. So I'm, I'm, I'm learning and everything. I had braids at the time. He's like, cut hair. I'm like, all right, that's all easy. And then we got to marriage and divorce. Lord Jesus. And it got painful. It was painful. It was real painful. So I literally had my own debate with him. Like, I would watch him. I would go to my Bible. And I'd be like, nah, Jesus said this. But then he would break it down. And then I was like, nah, this is crazy. Why would the Lord do that? He know we're not going to be with somebody forever. I literally was thinking that. And I, it, took, it was so painful because I'm in love with this woman at the time. I'm looking at her every day. You know, we got the house and everything. And I'm looking at her like, you know, my feel the Lord just started moving on me to where my feelings was kind of, my feelings was getting stripped from her. So it was kind of hard to tell her this because she's not, she's not being moved on. So she's kind of like, well, the Lord doesn't care about a piece of paper. It's what's in the heart. And I'm like, you know, this sounds good. But then I go to church, then I hear the word and I'm like, it's like going to school knowing you're going to get picked on, you know? Like, I come to, I come to Pine Bush, Minister Lino, marriage and divorce. <laughs> I go home, I watch Gino, marriage and divorce, second wife. And I'm like, dag. Eventually, I end up, like, you know, trying to, like, make, not, I didn't want to be awkward, but, like, I was trying to, like, so, you know how you say bye before you go out and, like, yo, have a good day, babe, whatever, you give a kiss. I would wait till she was in the bathroom to try to leave. Like, that way I wouldn't have to feel that awkwardness. And it was, it, 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 you know, it was no good. So eventually, I ended up having a conversation with her. I reached out to my, my wife. Yes, and I told her, I can't move on until you're dead. <laughs> <laughs> so then I told her, listen, you, I'm stuck. I'm, I'm really stuck. And I was so hurt. I mean, I really was hurt. I was kind of mad that I came across him. And then I told her, you know, you got to check him out. I wanted her to feel the same thing. Like, you got to listen. You got to check this out. So then, long story, let me keep it going. So then, I end up um, moving out, you know. I end up moving out. It was hard. I end up moving out, leaving everything. And, you know, I was like, I got to do this. I'm not going to go to hell with this woman. I love the Lord. So I end up moving out. Lord Jesus, thank you. I end up moving out. Um, I'm going to speed it up a little bit. So then, um, you know, I'm coming to church. I'm tarrying. I'm trying to get the Holy Ghost, trying to do the right thing. Lord Jesus. Um, I'm fasting, I'm, I'm seeking, end of the year service that passed, end of the year convocation that we had, um, I, went to, uh, I went down there, um, that Sunday morning, I wanted to go to service, but I woke up a little late, 
And I was like, man, if you don't get there on time, you know what happens. You're, gonna be, you're not going to be there. You're going to be somewhere, sitting somewhere else. And I, for some reason, I was like, nah, I, I'm not going to go. I just stood in my hotel, and I'm watching my iPad, and pastor's talking about the Holy Ghost. And then um, I remember I was laying down looking at the iPad, and I was looking out my window, and I was thinking like, man, you know, Lord Jesus, I hope I get this. You know? And I was just talking, Lord Jesus. And as I'm laying on my bed, looking at the iPad, and he's talking about the Holy Ghost, Lord Jesus, I just started crying. I got real emotional. I got real emotional. And then my stomach, my stomach was doing all this weird stuff. And then my stomach felt like I was doing sit-ups, and then I got on the floor. I started crying, Lord Jesus. And the Lord filled me with the Holy Ghost in the hotel. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. Filled me with the Holy Ghost in the hotel. Lord Jesus. I just wanted to share my testimony for anybody that's, that's, you know, that's in a situation or that feels like, you know, I'm stuck or whatever. I just listened to the Lord. I, it was hard, but it paid off. I got filled. I'm in the body. I'm in the, I'm in the truth. And I just thank God, man. Pray for me as I pray for y'all. Amen. Amen. Wonderful. Uh, next, we'll have a choral selection uh, by the Pine Bush Sisters.
Let's give her another round of applause for the Pine Bow Sisters. Now that will conclude the, the praise and testimony part of our service. We'll give thanks and praises for everything that went up. Hope it was done in sincerity and in truth. Um, the brothers designated for the offering, and we'll have the reading of the announcement by Brother Luigi. Great, brothers and sisters. Um, the announcement is April 27th, April 28th. Pastor Jenny will be in Pittsburgh, P PA. May 18, May 19, Pastor Jenny will be in Memphis, Tennessee. Pine Bush service Sunday, 11, 11 a.m. and 4 p.m. Also, Wednesday service at 7 p.m. And the first and the third Friday, prayer night from 7 to 9 p.m. And please, please be mindful, no eating, drinking, or gum chewing in the sanctuary. Please silence your phones and turn off... Turn it off so it won't interrupt the service. Please follow the leads of the ushers to keep order. Also remember to keep our leader, Pastor Geno Jennings, and family in prayer, and ministering brothers and their families in prayer. Pray for one another. Pray for the sick and the shut in. Remember, let all things be done decently in order. And um, this is for the transportation. Um, 30 minutes after the service, there'll be a bus that's leaving here. It's going back to the hotel. Um, and also, right after the service, like 30 minutes after, the culinary team will be serving light refreshment after service. Um, it's under the red tent outside. And for tomorrow, after service, about, about 45 minutes after um, the bene benediction, the culinary team will be providing lunch for all of y'all. Just remember it's out there. And that's about it. Thank you, brothers and sisters. Thank you. Thank you, Brother Luigi, for the announcement. Uh, another quick one for if you're driving a black Hyundai New Jersey plate, K72SZT, K72SZT, black Hyundai New Jersey plates, your windows are down, so just in case it starts to rain, you might want to wind your windows up. And then at this time, we'll hand the service over to our local minister, Brother Mark. Greetings, brothers and sisters. We bear witness that there is no God but one. There is no other God besides him. There is no other God equal to him. We thank him for sending the holy prophets and the holy apostles. We thank him for our current leader and teaching God, Pastor Gino Jennings. We thank God for the wonderful work that God is doing through his servant. Amen. We thank God for all the ministers that are laboring in word and doctrine here in the United States and all over the world. We thank God for this day. Amen. We truly thank God for the dedication of Pine Bush. We thank God for all of you that came from far, from different locations and different temples. We truly thank God for coming and dedicating this temple. It's truly, we thank God for his mercy, for his love and his compassion that he continues to show unto us. You know, Pine Bush is a lighthouse. It's going to be a, a house of learning. And we thank God for that, for being able to the truth of God to be in this town and hear the most valuable, which is the word of God. We thank God for all and everyone that is here visiting for the first time as well. Um, let not this be your last time. Continue to come and hear the word of God. The word of God is needful for us to survive in this wicked generation. Amen. We 
thank God for all the testimonies that went forth. We truly thank God what the Word of God is doing. It's transforming lives, changing lives. It's reaching all over the world. It got me in prison. <laughs> it got me in prison, and I thank God for that because it gave me a better hope, a better life. You know, I can never thank God for his word, and I thank God for the men of God because, you know, when I heard them, I thank God for that message. I thank God because I called my brother, Brother Minister Lionel. I said, hey, hey, Lionel, you heard of this, of this pastor? And he's like, no, no, look him up. You know, I'm in prison. He's outside in the world. And I'm like, hey, listen to him, listen to him. Thank God, look at here now. <laughs> Fast forward. <laughs> Fast forward. I, I came home and love, we, we got on the phone, we called Pastor Gino Jennings and look, God is doing a wonderful work. God answers prayer, you know, and I can never thank God enough. I thank God for the truth of God and the work that he's doing faithfully all over the world. And, you know, um, I thank God for Sister, uh, uh, Sister Boykin because, um, you know, um, she was the one that was sending the, uh, the DVDs and the, uh, the Bibles to, to the prison. And that's how I got hold of the truth of God. So we thank God for, for the wonderful work that God is doing. Um, it's truly a blessing and honor to be here. We're going to continue to uh, dedicate the dedication and also uh, the 40 years of leadership of Pastor Gino Jennings leading the people. We thank God for that as well. He, he was my leader and teacher, and I was in prison, and he didn't even know about it. I'm like, that's my pastor. So I, I thank God for that. Um, at this time, we are, one, one more thing before, just, just remember, brothers and sisters, this one thing is just keep in mind is this dedication is good, but the best thing for everything is to dedicate our life to the Lord. Amen. You know? That's the greatest thing. Just dedicate our lives to him. It's the greatest thing, the most valuable thing. So I thank God uh, for everyone at this time. Um, we have an announcement for uh, Brother Clayton. Most important, uh, I present unto you our leader and teaching pastor Gino Jennings. We're gonna, we're gonna ask everybody to please stand. We're gonna ask God's blessing upon this beautiful place here in New York. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Eternal, everlasting yeah. God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. Lord, Lord. Lord. God of the prophets and of the apostles, we thank you and praise you for your divine will. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. We thank you for making manifest your word in these last and evil days. I sent the prophets and the apostles and gave them the word of life. Thank you, Lord. We thank you for what you have written in the scriptures for our learning. How you establish a holy and sanctified path for all the world to hear and to follow. We thank you for the great things that you are doing. Not just here in New York, but around the world. We thank you for this place here. Eternal God, Lord Jesus. Lord. 
Bless everyone that is now present. Thank you for the prospering of the work of the Lord. For the many souls that you're waking up coming to the knowledge of the truth. God of heaven, as we stand before you this evening, we ask you to look down upon this place. Dedicated and consecrated by the effectual working of thine great power. Thank you, Lord. Let the word of God be preached here. And let your anointing fall in this house. That the hearts of men and women. Hallelujah. Thank you. That enter into this temple. Their heart might be pricked. May have a mind to surrender. Give up and be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And fill them with the Holy Ghost speaking in tongues. Bless all the ministering brethren that they may turn earnestly for the faith that's once delivered unto the saints. We thank you for this place of worship. How you continue to make provisions for us. Eternal God, enrich the hearts of everyone that come into our distemper. Bless them, be with them, keep them, and preserve them. That your perfect will might be made manifest. We actually, thank you, hallelujah. Hear our prayer today, O oh God. Thank God that your will may be wrought among Jew and Gentile. Everlasting God. We thank you again. Thank you, Lord. We thank you again and again. These many blessings we ask in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let every heart say amen. amen. Greetings again, brothers and sisters. We are thankful to the one true living God. Divine wisdom and his perfect understanding of all things. We thank him for the prophets. We thank him for the apostles. We thank him for the way of holiness. To Brother Minister Lino and Brother Minister Michael, to all that are here. This is a beautiful temple here in Pine Bush, New York. God for the many that is present. Most of all, we are grateful to God for the way of holiness revealed to his servants for our learning. I understand they have about three tents outside, so my sound is going in and out, so I hope you're able to stabilize it. I'm going in and out. I know we have a lot of internet problems like we had last week in uptown Manhattan, but I'm glad for Skaleski and his crew. They took all the freezing and static down and what they put up was excellent. So we're grateful. So I hope you that are watching our location here in Pine Bush, New York, is 29 New Street here in Pine Bush, New York. Services is every Sunday at 11 a.m. and again at 4 p.m. and every Wednesday at 7 p.m. 29 New Street, Pine Bush, New York is the location here. Now you're always welcome to come and not just visit, but obey the word of God that is preached. 
come out of the churches that you're in and walk with the truth of the gospel because God only has one way for everybody. I enjoyed all the songs and testimonies, especially <clears throat> I've been testifying for the longest that how the gospel has waked up many gang members. And, and I know this for a fact because I received testimonies by many hundreds. But I enjoyed the brother's testimony tonight. You know, being a member of the Bloods, one of the most reputable gangs in America. That's one of the gangs sometimes, many of them say you can't get out unless you're carried out in a body bag. But nobody can speak for God. God says he knows them that are his. I'm glad to see that we have not only bloods, but we have crips. We have gangster disciples and Mexican mafia. We have all that now walking on the pathway of holiness. Now, before going any further, let me just wake you viewers up and remind you that next weekend, God willing, we'll be in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania at the Doubletree by Hilton, 500 Mansfield Avenue in Pittsburgh. You're welcome to come. I believe services are on Saturday at 5 o'clock, Sunday, 11 o'clock, Sunday afternoon, 5 o'clock again. So you that is in the Pittsburgh area, you come now, 500 Mansfield Avenue in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, at the Double Tree uh, by Hilton. You that is in the Memphis, Tennessee area, God willing, I'll be in your area May 18th and 19th at the Renaissance Convention Center, 255 North Main Street, that's in the wicked city of Memphis. Hallelujah is right. <laughs> 255 North Main Street at the Renaissance Convention Center. Saturday service will be at 5 o'clock. And Sunday morning service will be at 11 o'clock. Sunday evening service will be at our local temple in Memphis, Tennessee, 4753 South Germantown Road. Write that down. 4753 South Germantown Road. That's where the 5 o'clock session will be on Sunday at our local temple there in Memphis, Tennessee. Now I want to remind all of you that uh, coming up uh, also in May, May 25th and to May 26th, I'll be in Greenville, South Carolina. That's where the combined church anniversaries of Florence, and Rocky Mountain, and Columbia, South Carolina will be held. We'll be in Greenville, South Carolina, May 25th and 26th at the Greenville Convention Center. One ex, is that ex, exposition drive in Greenville. One exposition drive and Greenville, Saturday at 5, Sunday morning at 11, God willing, Saturday at 5 again. You go to the church website, you'll see the upcoming events when we are coming to, into your area and wreck your city and your state and run your pastors out the pulpit. Amen. Now remember that the second Holy Convocation for Canada is coming up, God willing, June 14th through the 16th. 
that's Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, at the Operating Engineers Conference Center. That's the Operating Engineers Conference Center, 2245 Spears Road in Ontario, Canada. To all of my viewers and uh, throughout Canada, you make your preparations now. We we'll give it to June to sing your last song on your choir. You can leave your church and bring your choir room. That way we can put some folks in it to baptize them. In the name of the Lord Jesus. We want everybody in America, throughout Europe, across the Atlantic, South Pacific, around the Caribbean Sea, get prepared for the international Holy Convocation, that will be July 25th through July 28th. Remember, this will be held in Charlotte, North Carolina, at the Charlotte Convention Center. Seven additional hotels will be available. You bear that in mind, we'll be at the Charlotte Convention Center. That's Thursday, July 25th through Sunday, July 28th. It'll be in Charlotte, South Carolina. So all of you get yourselves ready to the upcoming events. Again, we thank God for Brother Minister Lionel uh, doing an excellent job here in Pine Bush, New York. You know, faithful brothers is hard to find. Not just that, Faithful men who love the soul of the people. It's hard to find. Many men want to be in the pulpit for notoriety and popularity. Want to make a name for themselves and don't care whether nobody's saved or not. But when you are ministering for the right reason, the word of God will be very effective. Last week in uptown Manhattan, God bless us greatly, 192 souls were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. That's a blessing. I got a text on my way here from one of the ministers in North Carolina, Brother Minister Lodge. He was ministering in Greensboro, and you know the word of God just brings people in everywhere. I tell the ministers, all you have to do is go. The people hear the word of God, guarantee they'll come out. And there in Greensboro, 55 souls was baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. One of those souls was an elderly man, 101 years old. I believe two elderly women in their late 80s. So that's a blessing. 101 years old. Look at the mercy that God had on them. God bless them to live over a century. Give him time to get himself Bible right. Over a century. How many times will God give man and woman that kind of mercy? Where you can live past a hundred just to hear the word of God before you taken out of time and pushed into eternity. So that's a blessing that when I received that text, it really made my heart feel good. And uh, it lets me know, moreover, that the word of God is not falling in vain. Sometime when you've been laboring as long as we have, as I've been saying, we've been preaching for going on 50 years preaching. 50 years. We would have, in two more years, it would be 50 years preaching the word of God but been pastoring 
40 years. That's a long time. And in the midst of that time, there's so many times that you feel like you're not doing nothing, absolutely nothing, because preaching the word of God to people, yeah, people are the most stubborn thing on earth. They can see the word of God plain and still say it's not the truth. The message on last Saturday about Jew and Gentile, I'm getting so much feedback from the Hebrew Israelite community. And many is enjoying it. There was one man made his own, I guess, video while he was driving. He said, Pastor Jennings finally addressed the Jew and Gentile question. He said, in fact, he addressed it a long time ago. You just didn't get it. Too many people are looking at the color of skin. And when you focus on the color of skin, you miss the mark. For regardless of your skin tone, your heart is not right, you're lost. Did you hear what I said? You can come from the tribe of Judah or the tribe of Benjamin or the tribe of Joseph and anybody. Dan, Gaddy, Issachar, Simeon, Levi, all of them. But uh, if you don't repent of your sins, and go down in water in the name of the Lord Jesus and receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost so the Spirit of God can circumcise your heart. Your flesh can be circumcised and you can still go to hell. But if your heart is wrong, you're wrong. You can be black as night white as snow or yellow as the butter on my table. If your heart is not circumcised by the great God of heaven and earth, you're lost. Amen. So uh, as always, we have some thanking God for the message and we have some criticizing the message. One man said, you're wrong about Jew and Gentile. He said, I remember, one fellow said, I remember what you said, that your black stinking flesh is not worth anything. I guess that include you. Yes. Amen. This dust right here, yes, ain't worth nothing. Amen. Until God says this, all flesh is grass. You better read that. In the book of Isaiah chapter 40. I want this to be for you to thank you something. Mm -hmm. I want to give you a, an, an emergency news flash. Mm -hmm. You're not. That's right. I want to show you what your flesh is worth. That's right. Hear me good now. Isaiah chapter 40 and now you verse can brag 6. brag about you came out the same tribe that uh, King Haley Selassie came out of. What do I care? What is that? You can come out of Judah, Reuben, hmm. Issachar, Gad, any of them. That's right. But look at what your flesh is worth. Isaiah chapter 40 and we're at verse 6. And believe me, when God talk, everybody got to hear. Oh, yes. Hear me good. Isaiah chapter 40 and verse 6. What is it? The voice said, cry. Yeah. That don't mean boo-hoo. <laughs> that mean uh, start speaking. That's right. God be my helper. That's what I'm determined to do. Oh, yes. Keep crying loud. Loudly. Thank God until he calls havoc all over the world. <laughs> havoc. See people <laughs> protesting in the street, yelling. <laughs> they doing that now. Yes. Yelling. All because of the truth of God. I thank God for that. That's right. And my travel around the world, I have all type of religious visitors and Hebrew Israelites and Muslims and 
unbelievers and antichrists and <laughs> Scientologists. Yes, I have all of them come here. That's right. And many times when I'm in the front greeting people, they tell me what they are and what they're not. Hmm. I have many men that are atheists, don't believe in God, so they say. They make comments when they hear the message. Some, many men said, well, I'm an atheist, but he's the only preacher I listen to. <laughs> One man said, I've been an atheist all my life. But hearing this message that Pastor Jennings is preaching is making me second guess. I'm starting to think different. That's what God will do. That's right. God will do it. Listen at the Bible. Isaiah 40 and verse 6. What is it? The voice said, cry. Cry. And he said, what shall I cry? What should I say to the people? All flesh. <laughs> That's right. Glory to God. Hmm. The Lord of heaven declared to the prophet. All flesh. You tell the people this. All flesh. How much? All flesh. All flesh is grass. And what else? And all the goodliness thereof. All the goodliness thereof. Is as the flower of the field. Is as the flowers of the field. The grass withereth. Wait, 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 wait. What happened? The grass withereth. The grass. Soon weather. The flower fadeth. The, foul, the flower fadeth away. Because the Spirit of the Lord. Because the Spirit of God. Bloweth upon it. Glory to God. Surely. Blows upon it. Surely. The people. The people. Is grass. Now that's yes. why I talk like I do. That's right. When I say I don't care about your color. I don't really care what you think of me. Do you hear this? That's right. I'm speaking the words of God. That's right. What did he say? The voice said, cry. What? Give Don't chapter and verse again. Isaiah. I want you that are here mm -hmm. and you that are listening around the world that thank you so much. That's right. I've been telling you by the grace of God. That's right. Long time. Long time. You're nothing. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's right. Black man, white man, you're nothing. Nothing. That's right. The only one that got you walking this planet mm -hmm. is the God that I preach about. That's right. That's the only one. That's right. You're nothing. You're nothing. Whether you are Elamite or African, you're nothing. That's right. Whether you are Arab or Portuguese, you're nothing. Amen. What the Bible said you're worth? The voice said cry. You know, God, he knows how to show us our how place. That's right. Folks think they so much because you got several million dollars and got a mansion and got a yacht. Listen, I don't care what you drive. Mm -mm. When you die, somebody else going to drive where you left off. That's right. That's right. Hey, man, your wife, give your suits away or give them to the Salvation Army or your sons lay claim on them. Amen. Hey, man, somebody else wear your shoes and. Somebody else use your handkerchief and even use your comb. That's right. Huh? That's right. When my father died, I believe, 33 years ago now. Hmm. He would always prepare his clothes the night before for mm -hmm. work. Mm -hmm. But God interrupted that plan. Oh, yes. God came and he wasn't laying around sick at all. Laying in bed talking to my mother that night. And my mother stepped out the room, just used the bathroom, come back, got back, in, got back in bed and pick up the conversation where she left off mm -hmm. and noticed my father wasn't answering. So she thought he fell to sleep. Amen. So she shook him. Ernest, do you hear me? He lay back, he lay on his back and had his hands Laying on his chest like this. This was a common way he slept. She said, shook him again. Ernest, do you hear me? Well, the grass was there. That's right. That's all. It was just a lump of grass. That's it. So she put us, her, her hand where his mouth and nose was, didn't feel nothing. So she jumped out of bed hmm. and started really shaking him. God came just that quick. 
She went to the bathroom, came back, and she was talking to the dead and didn't know it. Amen. I want everybody in the world Go ahead, Go ahead. to hear the message of holiness. That's it. There's one supreme power. That's all. And Jesus Christ is he. That's right. There's one that gave life. Oh, yes. There's one that grants death. That's right. Satan have thoroughly infiltrated all religions. Oh, yes. And made religious people think mm -hmm. they are more than what God made them. That's right. That's right. Klu Klux Klan for years. White supremacy. White supremacy. White supremacy. Blacks come along. Black power. Black power. <laughs> Everybody got it wrong. Everybody. You hear me? Everybody. Everybody. Got it wrong. That's right. The only one that is all powerful oh, is God himself. That's right. All flesh is grass. All flesh. Come on back. Come on back to Bible. That's right. I'm talking to a Hallelujah. field of grass the today. Field of grass. That's right. Look at the different color blades of grass we got in here. That's right. I see brown and white and dark brown and yellow and mm -hmm. amen, butterscotch and amen, all type of colors. All types. But the Bible says all flesh. Is grace. You can call yourself Pentecostal, non-denominational, Episcopalian, Hebrew Israelite, Nation of Islam, Sunni Muslim, Shiite, five percenters, three percenters, two percenters, four. That's right. Eight percenters, twenty percenters. Amen. Pentecostal, apostolic. Amen. You know what you are? Grace. The voice said, "Cry." What? The voice said, "Cry." And I'm gonna cry it loud. And I don't care who don't like it. That's right. There's a commandment here. The voice said cry. God showed the world. Go ahead, man. The creatures are not greater That's than right. the creator. That's right. That's right. Every creature knows his place. Oh, yes. Every creature. God made the beasts of the field, mm -hmm. fowls of the air, fish of the sea. Oh, yes. Everything knows their place. That's right. And everything functions according to the way God made it. That's right. But the moment God made man, <laughs> you don't see God repenting for none of his creation. No. But after he made man. That's right. God Almighty said in the scriptures that it repented God. That's right. It repented God. And it repented the Lord. Listen at this. Now in the book of Genesis, we'll start at verse 5. Says what? And God saw Give the chapter and verse. Genesis chapter 6. And we're starting at verse 5. Follow me. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great God in the earth. God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth. And it's still great. Still great. You had hard head, stubborn, That's three right. or four wife lover, living together, not married, smoking, drinking, drinking, and they didn't want to brag you God's child. <laughs> Amen. You're a piece of grass that God is waiting to cut. That's right. Huh? That's right. He want to cut that sin out of your hand. Amen. All right. And God saw that the wickedness of God man saw that the wickedness was, of man great, in was earth, great in the earth. And that every imagination, every imagination of the thoughts of his heart, of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. That's the way it is now, isn't it? Oh, yes. Only evil. The very imagination of the people. That's right. Every imagination. One man wrote me and said, I imagine what is like killing you every day. My Lord, my Lord. Then he said he watched me all the time. <laughs> Isn't that something? That is something. He said he imagined killing me every day in so many different forms and so many different ways. My Lord, my Lord. Because of what I'm preaching. Mm. Because we are preaching God's eternal word right. and making it firm. That's right. Solid. Solid. 
No flexibility, no way out. <laughs> no, no. No way out for nobody. That's right. That's right. And because I don't talk the talk, that society wish I would talk. <laughs> Amen. They say I'm mean. Mean. I'm rebellious. You can call me whatever you want. <laughs> God sent me to preach what's written. That's it. Not what I think, what I suppose. That's right. But what's written. That's it. And when I see the many thousands everywhere I go, waking up, hmm. the Bible is my lawnmower. Yes, it is. Because all flesh is grass. All flesh is and grass. And some, some grass get long. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's right. Get wild. Amen. Tangled up. Amen. Thank God. So I get in behind. I don't get in front of. I get behind the scriptures. That's right. And use the lawnmower of the scriptures everywhere I go. Everywhere. So I can cut down the grass. That's right. Everything that's not like God, mm -hmm. cut it down. Cut it down. But well, Pastor Jenner, I don't agree with you. I don't care. You better agree with the Bible. That's right. Get me out the picture. That's Too right. many folk want to bring me in the picture. <laughs> he thinks he's somebody. No, I don't think I'm somebody. I'm, I'm grass too. Grass too. I'm just a preaching piece of grass. That's it. And I'm a reading piece of grass. You're a reading piece of grass. <laughs> that's right. Huh? Hey, listen. That's right. This is the grass church That's right. of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Eh? Amen. This is the grass church. That's right. Of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's right. Listen at this now. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth. Yes. And that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. All right. And it repented the Lord. It, listen. It grieved the Lord. It repented the Lord. The Lord was sorry. That he had Not that he done wrong. No. But he seen how man changed. That's right. Because man at one time was upright. Upright. Because he was made in God's image. Amen. So man's character as well as his shape reflect God. That's it. Until sin and iniquity was found in him. That's right. Listen. And it repented the Lord that he had made man on that the earth. It repented the Lord. Can you imagine? That's something. That God repented for something? It repented the Lord. It repented the Lord? That he and had what made, was he repenting for? That he had made man on the earth. All right, and Mr. Man. And it grieved man. him. What? It grieved him. You see what you're doing, mister? That's right. That's right. That's why you hear me declaring the word of God so loud, Amen. so strong, so bold. That's right. Hallelujah. It grieved God then, and now look at you. That's right. Your hard head thing, hard. you're robbing, you're stealing, you're killing. Oh, yes. For what? Amen. All that gives the devil satisfaction. That's it. God didn't make you for that. No. God didn't make you to rape an 11-year-old girl and you 45. That's right. That's right. God didn't make you to sodomize a 15-year-old boy and you 50. No way. No, no. God didn't make you to carjack nobody. That's right. And God didn't make no one to praise your flesh. That's right. He said, what through the prophet? And it repented the Lord that he had All oh, flesh. All oh, flesh. Hear me, hear me, hear me. Good. Back in Isaiah chapter 40 and verse 6. All oh, flesh. Is grass. All flesh. All of you. All of it. That's why I don't think nobody flesh is better than nobody. All nobody. That, that no, right. Absolutely nobody. All nations before him. Let, let, hear, hear, hear this. Isaiah chapter 40 and we're at verse 17. I'm going to keep my mind just like his mind. That's it. Huh? That's right. And look at the world the way he look at it. <laughs> That's right. Listen at this. Isaiah chapter 40 and verse 17. What is it? All nations before him. All nations before him, and that him is God. Are as nothing. All nations. How much? All nations. All, All nations. nations before him are yeah. as nothing. And they are counted to him. And they are counted to him. Less than nothing. Less than nothing? Less than nothing. You that think you're something, you're so much. Mm -hmm. That's why so many cults is out here. Right. 
people think the leader that they have That's right. is more than what he is. That's right. So they elevate him to Godhood. That, that's, right. that's right. Don't they? Yes, they do. They either elevate him to Godhood mm -hmm. or they elevate him to be the Messiah. That's right. Or they elevate him to be Moses. That's true. That's right. That's right. It ain't no man. No man. Hear me. Good. Go ahead, In man. the 20th century, 21st, 19th, 18th, <laughs> 17th, 16th. That's right. Go all the way back. Nobody outside of Jesus mm -hmm. is the Messiah. He's the Messiah. That's right. Nobody. Nobody. That's right. Nobody outside of Moses is Moses. That's right. And truly nobody outside of the God of heaven Amen. is God. Someone say you're wrong there. Let's get the book of Psalms. Book of I know Psalms. what the internet is about to say now. About to say it. I know what they're about to quote this scripture. Somebody going to post it. That's right. You are God. And I'm going to take it apart and break it down and still show you you're nothing. Psalms 82 and at verse 6. Hear me good. Hear me good. Mm -hmm. You know, I love uh, to be able to take the Bible apart. That's right. So the Bible put man back in his old wretched place. <laughs> That's right. Hear me good. Psalms 82 and at verse 6. What is it? I have said ye are gods. I have said ye are gods. And all of you. All of you. Are children. Are children. Of the most high. When the Bible says ye are gods, ye that God. don't mean you're equal to the almighty. No. That don't mean you're just like the almighty. No. The almighty don't sin, don't smoke, don't drink, don't gamble. That's right. The almighty ain't chasing women. <laughs> no. And the almighty ain't funny. No. Am I right? That's right. That's right. Not at all. Not at all. So when a book says ye are gods, gods. that simply means the way God made man. That's it. God made man in his image. His image. God made man in his likeness mm -hmm. to reflect God, shape God, form God, fashion, and to take on the characteristics of God That's that right. he may walk according to the instructions that God laid in the scriptures. That's it. You walk around here and brag you God. I have said ye are gods. Yeah, and you find religion. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm God. Yeah. Look at the title you got, and you're cussing people out. Cussing, that's right. That's Look at right. the title you got, drinking beer, God yeah. drinking beer. <laughs> Amen. A Amen. whiskey drinking God, right. a pot smoking God. That's right. That's right. Hmm? I have said you are God. Here, here, here. Give chapter and verse again. Psalms 82 and at verse 6. Listen at this. I have said I you are God. I have God. And all of you are children. All of you are children. Of the most high. But what? But ye shall die like men. God don't die. No. The God of heaven. Well, Pastor Jen, you preach Jesus Christ is God. Mm -hmm. The spirit that was in him was God. That's and it. God didn't die. The son of God or the Messiah that died. That's it. That body of flesh and blood, that Mary birth, mm -hmm. that God, that died, that and died. God, the Spirit, was in that body. That's just it. like God, the Spirit, is in the church. That's right. That's right. Glory to God. I have said ye are gods. Ye are gods. And all of you are children of the Most High. And look at you. Amen. You get caught up in preachers. Mm. The preachers today, they get so caught up in themselves. That's right. You wouldn't think that Jesus ever walked earth. That's true. That's you true. viewers get this now. That's right. Are you in a cult today? Mm. Amen. See, as your preacher <laughs> give you permission to take each other wives. Mm. Mm -hmm. See, do your preacher give permission That's right. for the men to sleep with men? That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. See, do the preacher. You know, they're doing this now. Yes, they are. Two and three and four and five wives. That's right. And uh, here it is. We know when I was coming up, before I was born, mm -hmm. many old timers before me can identify with what I'm talking. Mm -hmm. There was a renowned false prophet in America. They called him Sweet Daddy Grace. Amen. The house of prayer for all people. It was really the house of prayer for all devils. That's right. Thousands upon thousands yeah. of people taking advantage of. He declared he was the reincarnation of Christ. My Lord. Father divine. Hmm. 
he declared he was God Almighty. My Lord, my Lord. God don't drive a car. No. God is everywhere. That's right. I ain't read where God is short and bald headed. <laughs> That's right. That's right. God don't do that. No. And when you came into his churches, there was a big picture of him, mm -hmm. and you had to touch the picture and say, Peace, Father. My Lord. My Lord. When you find people, mm -hmm. say, I ain't going to let nobody get caught up in me. No. That's why I don't allow nobody to put no honor on me. That's not do me. Get it off. That's right. Get it off. The Bible said, let not man think no higher than he ought to think, but, to think but think soberly. Think soberly. soberly. That's right. I ain't going to let nobody try to quote no scripture and put me in there. And that scripture only talking about <laughs> Jesus. No, sir. That's right. No, 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 not at all. Oh, no. I'm fine in my place. That's right. It's hard enough in my place. Amen. Psalms 39 and at verse 5. Listen at this. Behold. A real man of God won't let you put him above God. No way. And will not let you make him equal to God. That's right. Hear this. Psalms 39 and at verse 5. Follow me. Behold, thou hast made my days as an handbreadth. Thou hast made my days. As an handbreadth. As a handbreadth. And mine age is as nothing before thee. My age. Is Amen. nothing before God. Verily, every man. Holy to God. Amen. Verily, every man. Every man. At his best state. At his best state. Is altogether vanity. Every man. How plain is this? That's right. How plain is this? Verily, every man. That goes for every man in here. That's right. Every that goes man. for every man that are listening. That's right. That got all the prophets. Amen. That got all the apostles. Every that man. got every man walking the earth today. That's right. The word of God says. Verily, every verily, man. Verily, which means truly. Truly. Every man. At his best state. At his best state. Is altogether vanity. Every man. Every man. Every man. Every man. Every man. Do you hear this? Verily, every man. That got Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and right. Esau, amen, and amen, Dan and Gad and Isaiah and Ezekiel. Thank God, all of them. All of them. Every man. Every man. Every man. Every man. At his best state. You see how the Bible put man back in his place? That's right. You old high-minded, hell-bound, exalted things out there. That's you right. might as well come on off your throne Amen. and come right back to the Bible. That's it. And recognize the fact only one is on the throne. That's it. And Christ is he. That's right. That's one. Verily, every man at his God best don't, state. Listen, God's throne is not made for multiple figures. <laughs> no. No. Not God's throne. Not God's throne. That's right. Amen. Amen. I have somebody to write me. I noticed, they said, I noticed in your headquarters church, the chair you sit in, sit in is not like the churches I'm used to seeing. I'm used to seeing the bishop. Oh, his, his chair is almost a throne. Right. Thrones are for kings. I'm not a king man. No. I'm a servant. That's right. That's right. I'm just a servant. That's right. You men out here. Amen. Who want to put yourself as Lord. As Lord. Over God inheritance. That's right. God sends a preacher to lead the people to him. That's it. Lead the people to God. Mm -hmm. Not to lead the people to theology, mm -hmm. ideology, philosophy. That's right. My job is to lead you to God by scripture. First Peter chapter 5 and at verse 3. That's what? Neither is being Lord. You better begin at verse 1. Uh, first Peter chapter 5 will start at verse 1. That's what? The elders which are among you I exhort. The elders which are among you I exhort. Who am also an elder. I am also an elder. And a witness of the I'm sufferings of Christ. I'm a witness of the sufferings of Christ. And also a partaker of the glory that shall be revealed. Yes. Feed the flock of God. There, here. Do you see this? That's it. This is the job of the preacher. That's right. Feed, feed the, the flock, flock of God. Of God. Which is the among flock you. of God. Look at the titles of the church. Yes. Flock, grass, God's people. Mm -hmm. One man. That's right. One new man. One new man. That's God's people. That's right. Listen. Feed the flock of God which is among you. 
Feed the flock of God that's among you. Taking the oversight thereof, not by constraint. Look out for them, that's not it. by force. That's it. Hear me, people. That's it. Is your preacher looking out for you, or is he looking out for his, your wallet? Amen. That's all these things care about, how much money you can give him. That's it. That's why there's things he will not preach against because he can't get rich from it. Amen. Amen. Fake. I know God is a healer. Oh, right. yes, I do. Right. But we ain't got to hire nobody to pretend <laughs> if God don't hear you, you will be the way you are. Oh, yes. Sick or dead. That's right. Or dying. Or dying. Or waiting on God to deliver you. That's right. Listen at this. Feed the flock of God which is among you. Feed the flock of God that's among you. Taking the oversight thereof, not by constraint. Not by constraint. But willingly. What? But willingly. Willingly. So if you're willingly doing it, willingly. don't pay them. That's right. Don't you give these false prophets another dime. Not for filthy lucre. Let them go get a job and go to work. That's right. I don't care if they got the stern hot dogs. <laughs> that's right. That's right. You people send your pastor children to the best schools in the country. Amen. If you got that money where you can send his school, his children, to the best schools, then won't you send your own? That's right. Let him get a job or go to work or let him die broke and go to hell. That's right. I know many of you don't like this because I'm cutting into your pay. Oh, yes. I'm going to do that. Oh, yes. Huh? Oh, yes. Do you hear this? Feed the flock of God which is among you. Feed them. Amen. Feed, Feed them. That's it. Had a man write me and say, you're the first preacher I ever heard of that worked. <laughs> he said, the church I came from, our preacher don't work. Lord. None of the preachers, a lot of these preachers don't believe in working today. They no. Bible says work with your own hands. own hands. But these men, the only work they do with their own hands is pick your pockets. <laughs> That's right. They steal with their own hands. That's right. Do you hear what I'm telling you? Feed the flock of God which Feed is among you. Feed the flock of God with that's among you. Taking the oversight thereof, not by constraint. And what? But willingly. Willingly. Not for filthy lucre. Hmm. Don't do it for money. But of a ready mind. The Bible says not for, for filthy, lucre. filthy lucre. Don't do it for money. That's right. That's why some men get a church, or rather they say they're a preacher. Mm -hmm. They just go from church to church, oh, yeah. run revivals, so they can collect offering all week long. That's right. That's right. You dumb, ignorant, hell-bound, devil-deceived followers, look at these men that come in your church and want, run a week revival so his pockets can get thicker. That's right. That's right. And he tell you nothing but feel good messages. Feel good. Like Daniel in the lion's den. Yeah. Meshach, Shadrach, and the Bendigo. And, amen. Noah, uh, Job suffered with boils. <laughs> <laughs> he don't break up no remarriage and divorce, no, no live no, together, no. not married. Mm -mm. He don't tell you there's one way to God. You got to repent. You got to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. You have to have the Holy Ghost speaking in other tongues. No. And the Spirit of God give others. He don't preach against nothing That's right. that work in your favor. That's right. He just give you slogans. You can't lose with the stuff I use. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Bunch of slogans. Amen. And they called that church this mess. Mm. And that's what it is. Amen. This mess that is out here today Amen. don't represent God no. at all. They no. can sing about Jesus, jump about Jesus. You can look at on the internet. You can look at anywhere. This the, the churches are gone wild. Yes, church, they are. you know, years ago it used to be <laughs> <laughs> It used to be commercial. It used to be commercials on TV, girls gone wild. That's right. <laughs> well, what they should say is church is gone wild. Amen. This junk ain't church. It's junk. Why, you got to be a devil deceived fool Amen. to think this mess, this trash, yeah. this garbage, oh, yeah. this circus is church? Amen. That stuff today is not church. No way. Yeah, man, people just all doing the twerking, all in the pulpit. Yes, they are. Amen. Yeah, Shaking all in the pulpit. They're all doing all type of steps and doing the worm all on the floor. That's right. Supposed to be church. Supposed to be church. 
Amen. Got Kirk Franklin singing up there. Just a no more save that a dog got five legs. That's right. All this junk ain't no church. No way. God says my house shall be called a house of prayer. For all people. For all people. For all people. That's right. Four and five and six wife churches. That's that right. mess is not no church. No way. That's a club at its best. <laughs> Amen. They're having nothing but an orgy with, bi with Bible. That's right. That's all they're doing. It. That's all they're doing. That's it. That's why they're so upset with me. <laughs> one preacher got so mad, me preaching on the one wife stand, he, uh, he spoke out against me. He said, all you got is one wife. All the women you got in church, you should marry some more. That's all right. I parked my car in a very well garage. Amen. I'm satisfied. Satisfied. Wonderful. Wonderful. They're no good pulpit Bible carrying bums. Bums. That's what they are. Amen. Anytime these men are married, like one preacher who's been yelling about me, now he stole one of the brothers of his church, of his synagogue or temple, whatever he called it, <laughs> wives, and he married her. Mm. And the brother left from under him. Mm. They are nothing but pimps. That's it. That's right. And these preachers coerce you. Oh, yes. They use the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. When they had concubines and multiple wives. Right. And they say, that's the way we do it now. That's not, not since Jesus came not, here. Not since Jesus oh, came. Oh, no, the Messiah broke that stuff up. That's right. Give me the 10th chapter, chapter of the, the book, book of, Mark. of Mark. That's right. I want this to be good in case I got any pimps here. <laughs> Amen. Say Mark chapter 10. We'll I'm going to knock one. you off your platform shoes. That's right. Right down to Bible. That's right. Mr. Grass. Amen. Mr. Grass. Mr. Grass. This is your cutting. That's it. Huh? St. Mark chapter 10. Yeah, man. Yeah, one. man. Hear yeah, good. Amen. Come on, son. St. Mark chapter 10. We're at the first verse. What is it? And he arose from thence and cometh into the coast of Judea. They say you only can have one wife in your church. It ain't my church. No. No. I ain't die for you. <laughs> no. Even though you may want me dead, I ain't die for you. No. Ain't no need to talk about the Messiah if you're not going to respect what he stand for. That's right. That's right. One greater than Moses came here. Oh, yes. And if you don't obey him, to hell you going. That's it. All right. St. Mark chapter 10, we're at verse 1. What is it? And he arose from thence and cometh into the coast of Judea. Real quick. By the farther side of Jordan, and the people resort unto him again. And then we'll get the 19th chapter of Matthew. Matthew. Real quick. And as he was one, he taught them again. Yes. And the Pharisees came to him and asked him, is it lawful for a man to put away his wife, tempting him? Yeah, that's what these men want now. Yeah. Yeah, they want to get rid of their wives because, you know, some mm -hmm. of their wives are just crazy. <laughs> Not all women, but some of these women today that I like get a lost their mind. Yeah. Want to get married and stay out all night. What you get married for? That's right. That's right. Want to get married and stay out all night and run here and there with their friends? No, that's not for a married woman. No. That's not for a married woman. No. Well, I don't want no man to be over me. The Bible said the head of every man. The every every woman, woman is the man. Is the Notice man. it didn't say the head of every woman is just your husband. No. It says the head the of every woman is the man. Is the man. Is the man. I don't get many amens on that, so I better read it. <laughs> That's right. First, first Corinthians chapter 11. I want 11. this to be good for you that think I'm making up something. Right. I'm known for giving your Bible. You're known for it. Huh? That's right. I'm known for giving your Bible. That's right. Let's read it for the hearing in pad. First Corinthians chapter 11. We're going to start at the very first verse. Follow me. Be ye followers of me. Look at the Apostle Paul. Be ye followers of me. Even as I, even also, as am I also am a Christ. Christ. Now I praise you, brethren. Yes. That ye remember me in all things. What is it? And keep the ordinances as I deliver them unto you. Yes. But I would have you know. Listen at this. I want you to know this. That the head of every man is Christ. The head of every man is Christ, the son of the living God. And the head of the woman. The head of the woman. Is the man. No, that just the head of the woman is a husband. And the head of the woman is the man. No, just a husband. The head of the woman is the man. Man is your head, period. Period. That's right. 
Whether you got a husband or not. The head of the woman. See, God put that in there because mm -hmm. he know every woman ain't married. That's right. That's and a right. woman may say, well, look, I ain't married yet. I ain't got no head. That ain't what God said. The head of the woman is the man. Whether you're married or not married. married. Or not. That's right. The Bible just says the head of the woman is the man. All right. No need to go shouting now. <laughs> Amen. No need to shout now. You better let you come on back here. Let you come on back. All right, let's go back to where we were in the 10th chapter of Mark. I want to give you multiple wife religions. Back in St. Mark chapter 10 and verse 2. All right. And the Pharisees came to him and asked him. And asked him. Is it lawful for a man to put away his wife? Yes. Tempting him. Tempting him. And he answered and said unto them, what did Moses command? Ah, folks Amen. love Moses. Love Moses. What did Moses command? And they said Moses suffered to write a bill of divorcement. Moses mm -hmm. suffered to write a bill of to divorce. write a bill of divorce and to put her away, and you can get rid of her. And Jesus answered and said, Jesus unto them, said, for the hardness of your heart. Now Jesus gave the reason why Moses done it for the hardness of your heart. Moses done it because of the stubbornness, mm -hmm. the hardness of your heart, the wickedness. Because your heart loved flesh. He wrote you this precept. He let you have that precept. But from the beginning of what? the creation. Hey, hey, hey. He going back further than Moses now. Oh, yes. Before Moses was born. That's right. He wasn't back there in the beginning of creation. That's right. What is it? But from the beginning of the creation. From the beginning of creation. God made them male and female. God made them male and female. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and cleave to his wife. Cleave to wives. Cleave to his wife. A man leave father and mother and cleave to his wives. This cause shall a man leave his father and mother and cleave to his wife. One? His wife. Just one? His wife. No, W-I-F-E. His wife. Come home to one. Come back to one. His wife. Go to the restaurant with one. His wife. Go to bed with one. His wife. Eat grits with one. His wife. Eat fish with one. His wife. Cut a piece of sweet potato pie with one. His wife. That's right. Hear this. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and cleave to his wife. And what? And they twain shall be one flesh. Now, if you got more than one wife, mm -hmm. how can you be one flesh, one flesh when you don't have one flesh? That's right. That's right. How can you be one flesh with a bunch of wives or one flesh with a bunch of husbands? That's right. Have you taken note of these multi-wise religions? They always side with the men that he can have a lot of wives. Yeah. They never say the women can have a lot of husbands. That's true. You ain't caught on to that yet? <laughs> That's right. You ain't caught on to that yet? That's right. Amen. That Paul Pitt buzzing already looking at your daughter. Yes, he is. Planning in advance. Go ahead. Get all the wives for the bishop. Right. But the women only can have one man. <laughs> Amen. You viewers ain't caught on to that yet. That's right. That's right. You've been suckered. Amen. You're going to give your wife to your pastor as a gift? Mm. You're going to give your daughter away? My Lord, my Lord. To your pastor? Mm. That's You're going to give your 17-year-old daughter away? To your 85 year old goat for a bishop? That's right. That's true. And you think that's God's will? My Lord. That's wicked. Oh, yes. That's why they can't stand me. Oh, yes. Damn it, good. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and cleave to his wife. mother and cleave to his wife. And they twain shall be one flesh. What? what they twain. They, they twain. Shall be one flesh. And so then they are no more twain but one flesh. They're no longer two. That's right. But one flesh. What therefore? It didn't say they're no longer three, four, five, six, but one flesh. No. This is so plain. They are no longer two twain. Twain. But one flesh. What therefore God hath joined together. Let not man put asunder. And in the house his disciples asked him again of the same matter. Yes. And he saith unto them, Whosoever shall put away his wife. Yes. And marry another. And marry another. Committeth adultery against her. No, 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 you don't. Amen. The preacher said today, you don't do that. No. Mm. Whosoever. The preacher said, trade a man. Lord. You ever, you ever seen the used car lot? That's the way, exactly where the churches are. That's right. 
A used wife lot. That's right. Used. You, you don't see no used men lot. <laughs> Just no. a used wife lot. That's right. That's right. You can get that wife for $15. You can get that wife for $20. Mm. You can get that wife for $30. You can get that wife for $25.50. <laughs> then you can get that wife for $2 and a quarter. Oh, Lord. Use wife lot. That's all these churches are. That's right. That's all these so-called synagogues are. Yes. They're nothing but a used wife lot that needs to be bulldozed down. That's right. That's There's right. always the bishop yeah. that can have all the wives. Oh, yeah. And your women are forced only preach one, one husband. One husband. You ain't waked up yet, <laughs> you Bible-carrying sucker. <laughs> That's right. You've been deceived. You've been duped. You've been conned. That's why they want me off of the air. That's right. Because we are exposing the folly of the pulpit. Amen. You old hypocrite. Amen. And he says yeah, unto them. Hear me good. St. Mark chapter 10 at verse 11. Jesus said unto them. Whosoever shall put away his wife. Whosoever. Whosoever. Shall put away his wife. And marry another. And marry another. Committeth adultery committeth against her. Committeth adultery against her. And if a woman shall put away her husband. And if a woman get rid of her husband. And be married to another. And get another man. She committeth adultery. Now in giving the 19th, 19th chapter, chapter of Matthew. Yes. This Ma is where they say he justified. Divorce. That's right. They overlook the Bible. I want to read this real good and take it apart. Amen. I often say over the air, focus on the language of the Bible. That's right. If you don't know the difference between fornication and adultery, you messed up. Yes. Fornication is not committed by married people. No. Adultery is committed by the married. That's it. Fornication is committed by single folk. That's right. Someone says sex is sex. All sex is not the same. No. Somebody say, oh, yes, it is. If it is, then men and men, it would be all right. It would be all right. That's all right. sex is not the same. No. There's some sex that fall under the title abomination. Abomination. Which exceeds fornication. That's right. That's right. You're going to tell me a, a woman lay with a dog is just like laying with a man? No way. Are you that big of a fool? No way. A man that lay with man? Mm. Fred and Barney lay together. That's not like Fred and Wilma. Oh, no. <laughs> no. No way. Don't tell me all sex is the same. No. If you, a man also lies yeah, with man. Give me God. Leviticus and then give me the fifth chapter mm -hmm. of 1 Corinthians, I believe. That's right. All right, let's, we're going to go to Old Testament yes. and New. That's it. Where it happened back under the law and where it happened when the church was here. That's right. Come on, we're going to get all of it. Let's oh, have it. In the book of Leviticus, chapter 20. Just in case 20. I got near you men or women with more than one wife and more than one husband, and you somewhere jumping and shouting and trying to read your Bible, I'm going to tie your hips down tie, with the Bible. Tie him down. So when you go back under them sheets at home, and that man you're laying with, his wife is still living, you ain't nothing but a spare tire. That's it. And I'm here with the Bible to flatten your tire. That's right. Hear me good? In the book of Leviticus chapter Get mad as you want. Amen. Come on back to the Bible here. Go ahead, brother. Go ahead. Hear me. Hear me good. In the book of Leviticus chapter 20 and verse 13. You know the internet is jumping. Yes, it There's is. There's one thing about this subject. They are fight me tooth and nail <laughs> to have that orgy faith. Amen. That orgy Christian faith. Amen. Hmm? That's right. Sleep with a white wife that night, a yellow wife the next night, a brown wife the next night, a dark brown wife, a, a medium brown wife, a caramel color wife, a peach color wife. Go ahead, Pastor. You old plantation. You's a <laughs> massa. That's you right. ain't no preacher. You massa. Massa. That's all you got. That's right. Your preacher is massa. That's right. Anytime a man gonna marry your own wife mm. and you let him. You're on a plantation. You ain't in no church. That's right. You're not in no synagogue. That's right. And you're not in a mosque. No. You're on a plantation that hide behind religion. That's it. That's right. Your bishop is massa. He's, he's massa. Huh? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Write it down. Write that down real good. Play it to him. Play it. Play it to massa, Fred. That's right. He come tell you, gone up in some tongue. Who shut the bar? Shut the bar. Tell up the the Lord. Ta 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 ta. 
The Lord told me to tell you, the Lord want me to have, want me to marry your wife. Mm. Marry your wife. Let me marry your wife. My Lord, my Lord. And he says, is that the Lord will, Bishop? Yes. The mm. Lord told me to marry your wife. All right, if that's the Lord will, and then he marry your wife. He marry. And you give your wife the massa. That's right. And he make up some scriptures to whip you on the back like a 12-year slave. That's right. Because of your ignorance of the Bible, yeah. he's able to pull it over on you. Oh, yeah. That's why they don't like us, because I'm not ignorant to the Bible. That's it. That's right. Hear me good? Let you multi-wide preachers, hear me good? Amen. Hear me good? Amen. Even the God, of, even Jesus only had one wife. One wife. He called his wife the church. The church. He going to present to himself a glorious church. That's the bride. That's the bride. He's called the husband man. That's right. He ain't presenting a bunch of churches. No. One church. One church. One people. That's right. Glory to God. Hear this. Hear this. Leviticus chapter 20 and we're at verse 13. Listen at this. If I'm, I'm going to show you all four and all six is not the same. That's right. Give me Leviticus, then we'll get Corinthians. Then right. we'll go back to Matthew. Amen. Everybody all right? Amen. If you're not, it ain't my problem. <laughs> Hear this good. In Leviticus chapter 20 and verse 13. What is it? If a man also lie with mankind. If a man. Lie with mankind. As he lieth with a woman. Do you see that? That's it. That's right. Now, a woman, you can do a whole lot with. Blood. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Whole lot. I mean, you can just you can just do a whole lot with. A whole them. lot. Praise the name of God. That's right. But a man. But a man. Yeah, 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 yeah. If but a, a man, I don't care if you put a wig on. Amen. The negligee. And wear a size 22 pumps. That's right. Amen. 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 Do you hear this? If a man also lie with mankind. How? As he lieth with a woman. What is it? Both of them have committed an abomination. They shall surely be put to, 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 to death. death. Get it out. Get it out. <laughs> uh, I got stuck, Pastor. You try to keep them living. <laughs> yeah. Tell the devil to turn Don't your turn tongue loose. <laughs> the devil's trying to keep them living. <laughs> Get that devil out your mouth. <laughs> Go and say, God, what did he say, son? If a man also lie with mankind. God have never called a man that lay with woman abomination. Abomination. Unless... It went another direction. And That's we're going right. to show you that direction. That's right. Listen at this. Yep. Still in Leviticus chapter 20 and verse 13. Come on, William. If a man also lie with mankind. If a man lie with mankind. As he lieth with a woman. As he lie with the woman. Both of them. Someone said, Pastor Jennings, how is that? Well, I don't have time to go into it. Yeah, you just lot. imagine what you could do with a woman. <laughs> then just... <laughs> That's right. Ask yourself, can you see yourself trying to do that with a man? My Lord. And if you can, you ought to go to hell. Uh, <laughs> it's 7.54. <laughs> you ought to go to hell tonight. T tonight. That's right. And all these women out here in the world, all these women oh, in the yeah. world, mm. heights, different complexion, different built and different color, and all you want is some old ass you need, man. My Lord. My Lord, my Lord. Amen. Hear me good. If a man also lie with mankind. A man lie with mankind. As, as he lies with a woman. He lie with a woman. Both of them have committed an abomination. That's how rigid it was back then. They shall surely be put to death. They was going to be put to death. Their blood shall be upon them. Their blood shall be upon them. Now All right, let's get the fifth chapter. Of the book of 1 Corinthians. Of 1 Corinthians. And at verse 1. Listen at this. It is reported commonly. I'm getting old and New Testament. Mm -hmm. For you people that say, oh, we're not, we're not under the law no more. We under grace. I hear some grace right here. 1 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 1. Listen at this. It is reported commonly. How often this was going on? Commonly. Commonly. 
It was just as common as drinking water. That's right. It is reported commonly that there is fornication among you. What kind? And such fornication as is not so much as named among the Gentiles. What? That one should have his father's wife. Amen. And father's wife fall in two categories today. Yeah. Father's wife, your biological mother. Mm -hmm. But then you got father's wife that may not be your biological mother. So therefore, she had the modern title stepmother. That's right. That's right. But laying with your biological mother. Mm. It is reported commonly. How often? Commonly. Commonly. Keep it all in the family. That's right. That's right. Mama laying with her own son. That's right. And daughter laying with her own father. My Lord. Commonly. I had somebody say, you preach against that. I just can't take it. I can't listen at you. Why can't you if you're innocent? Right. Amen. If you're innocent, why can't you, why can't you hear this? That's right. None of these other fellas out here will preach nothing. No. They're not preaching nothing. Oh, no. Did you hear this? It is reported commonly. How often? Commonly. Among you. That there is fornication among you. What kind is it? And such fornication as is not so much as named among the Gentiles. You hear this? That one should have. That lets you know Gentiles wasn't doing this here. That's right. This was not a Gentile people acting like this. And such fornication as is not so much as named among the Gentiles. It wasn't a name among the Gentiles, and you only have two class of people. That's right. Jew or Gentiles. Amen. I said. That's it. You only, I don't care what nationality you are, if you're not a natural Jew, you are a Gentile. A Gentile. And the Bible already said not so much name among them. And not so much as named among the Gentiles. That one should have his father's wife. How in the world can a son look at his mama? Something. The way he look at women out there in the street. That's right. That's right. That's right. How in the world can a father look at his daughter? Look at his daughter. The way he look at women out there in the street. Amen. That he want to be with her. Yeah. She want to be with him. Oh, yes. And they tell me something wrong with me for preaching against it. No, something wrong with you because you can't take it. That's right. That's right. If we preach thou should not steal and you know you're not a thief, it shouldn't bother you. No. You shouldn't put your hands in your pocket and be looking around. That's right. Amen. That's right. All right, go back to the 19th chapter of Matthew. Is everybody all right? Now in Matthew Let's chapter 19. Let's strike this out real good. Matthew 19, we're going to start at verse 1. Yes. And it came to pass that when Jesus had finished these sayings, All right. he departed from Galilee uh -huh. and came into the coast of Judea beyond Jordan. And great multitudes followed him, and he healed them there. The Pharisees also came unto him, tempting him. Tempting him. And saying unto him, Is it lawful for a man to put away his wife for every cause? Yes. And he answered and said unto them, Have ye not read that he which made them at the beginning made them male and female? And said, For this cause shall a man leave father and mother, and shall cleave to his wife. Yes. And they twain shall be one flesh. One flesh. Wherefore they are no more twain, but one flesh. All right. But therefore God hath joined together, let not man put asunder. Yes. They say unto him, Why did Moses then? Why? Yeah, that's the way folks are now. That's the way they are. They love Moses. Oh, yeah. They are jump on Moses quick. <laughs> that's right. Why did Moses then? Command to give a Command writing of divorce. Command to give a writing of divorce. And to put her away. And get rid of her. He saith unto them, Moses, because Look of the at hardness Jesus of teaching. your hearts. Moses. Because of because the hardness of your hearts. Jesus plainly give the reason. That's right. That's right. Jesus never said, God let you do it. No, Moses. Moses, because of the hardness they of your hearts. They never said, why did God let you do it? No. Why did Moses then command to give a writing of divorcement and, and to put her away? Put her away. He saith unto them, Moses, because Moses, of the hardness of your heart. Because of the hardness of your heart. Suffered you to, suffered put, away you to your put away your wife. But from the beginning it was not so. Moses wasn't back in the beginning. That's right. He said from the beginning it wasn't meant to be. And I say unto you. Uh oh. Amen. I said. They let you know, hey, someone greater than Moses is talking now. That's right. I say unto you, whosoever shall put away his wife. Now listen at this. This is what the people jump on. Whosoever, whosoever put away his wife. Except it be for fornication. Now, 
Have you ever seen a married person commit fornication? No. no. Married people commit adultery. That's right. So he's dealing with two types of wives here. That's right. A spouse wife and a married woman. And a married woman. See, the spouse wife can commit fornication. Mm -hmm. In fact, that's what Mary and Joseph thought Mary did. That's right. And yet the Bible says that Mary and Joseph was like spouse. spouse. And yet Joseph already had the title husband. husband. You better read that quick now. St. Matthew chapter 1 and verse 18. Follow me. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this one. Then we go back to Matthew. Matthew 1 and verse 18. Yes. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this one. This is how it was. When as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Bible established their relationship. That's right. How many know what espouse means? Spouse. Engage. Yes. Some of you may be engaged now. Right. Mm -hmm. Just make sure it's a man and a woman. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. I mean, let's keep it like that. Keep it like that. Don't need to be engaged to a horse or a cow or a dog. Lord. Amen. Amen. Listen at this. When as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph. His mother Mary were engaged to Joseph. Before they came together, she was found with before child of the Holy Ghost. Before they came together, mean before they, listen, before they came together. Yes. She was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Then Joseph, her husband. Wait a minute, what title did he have? Joseph, her husband. But what was their relationship? Mary was espoused to Joseph. And what title did he have? Joseph, her husband. Amen. You got the title of husband and wife before you married. That's right. You're just not allowed to do the performance. That's it. That's right. Because you're not bound yet. That's right. Listen. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man. Being a just man. And not willing to not make willing her to a public example, away. was minded to put her away he privately. He was minded. Minded. Because the Bible lets him know what, if a woman under the law. Under the law. What she would do if you are engaged to her, right. you can put her away. That's right. Listen. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man. Yes. And not willing to make her a public example. He ain't want everybody to know about what's going on. Was minded to put her away privately. Yes. But while he thought of these things. Why he gave it thought. Behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream. And said what? Saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife. Wait a minute. But what was their relationship? Mary was espoused to Joseph. They wasn't even married yet. That's right. But because they was already committed, right. he had the title husband, and she had the title wife. That's right. But they didn't come together to have no sex. That's right. There was no fornication taking place. No. Joseph thought Mary fornicated. Right. That's why he wanted to put her away, put away privately. Privately. Now let's go back to the 19th chapter of Matthew. Back in Matthew chapter 19 and at verse 9. Listen. And I say unto you, whosoever shall, whosoever put, away shall put away his wife, except it be for fornication, and shall marry and shall, another, and shall marry another, committeth adultery. Now, in order for you to commit adultery, adultery. you got to be already married. That's right. In order for you to commit adultery, adultery, you got to be already married and to marry somebody else. That's right. Listen. It, read on say, quick. And I say unto you, whosoever shall put away his wife, yes. except it be for fornication, and, and shall marry another, commit of adultery. And whoso marrieth her, who which is put whoever, away, whoever marry her, which is put that away, that is divorced, doeth commit adultery. Your husband got to die. Your wife got to die. Got to die. Grass. Grass. Brother and Sister Grass. The voice said, cry, and he said, what Brother shall I cry? Brother and Sister Grass, you can't get no new blades. <laughs> That's right. That's you right. You can't get no new blade of grass. I don't care what your pastor believe. He can jump no and shout and go in all the tongues he want. That's right. He had to come back to the rule of God's word. That's right. And what did he say there? Whosoever shall put away his wife, except it be for fornication. And marry and another. And shall marry another, committeth adultery. And what else? And whoso marrieth her, which is put away, doeth commit adultery. All right, let's see how long are we to stay together. Now in 1 Corinthians chapter 7. 739. 1 Corinthians 7.39. Yes. The wife is bound by the law. How long? As long as her husband liveth. No, to her next birthday. The wife is bound by the law as long as her husband liveth. But. To a, to, does she get a first string of gray hair? The wife is bound by the law as long as her husband liveth. Until she put on weight. As long as her husband liveth. Until all the children are born. As long as her husband liveth. 
I know some of you women want a new husband. Want a new one. Amen. Want a new one. But some, some men, some men, the truth of the matter is some men is just no good. That's right. That's the truth of it. That's right. They beat their wives, slap their wives, and kick their wives. And let me tell you fellas something. Hmm. Any man that lay his hands on his wife the same way you would lay your hands on a man, Amen. you are no good, no rotten, good. weak bum. That's right. Yes, you are. That's right. That's right. Hey, man, the woman got her beaten when she was a child. Yeah. What are you slapping her around for? Amen. Beating her, kicking her. I've dealt with cases where women been knocked down and the man stand over her and kicked and broke her ribs. My Lord, my Lord. Dealt with cases where the man stepped and stomped his wife back until he broke it mm. and then threw her down the step. My Lord, my Lord. I've dealt with cases where the man broke his wife's jaw and he's a bishop of an apostolic church. Mm. You're a bunch of heathens. That's a bunch and of they heathens. wonder why I preach heathens. so hard. You're a bunch of heathens. That's right. That's right. Center don't respect these church people today. No. Many of these men is just no good. They don't want to take care of wife, children, nothing. Mm. What I find is so ridiculous. A man leave his wife <laughs> and children and go take care of another woman and her children. That's right. <laughs> he, he tell his wife and kids, I'm tired of supporting y'all. My Lord. And then you go support somebody else, wife and kids. My Lord. You just use that as an excuse. That's right. That's right. Hear me good. The wife is bound by the law as long as her husband liveth. How long? As long as her husband liveth. What? But if the husband be dead. What? She, but if the husband be dead. Not dying. Dead, dead. Not in the hospital and the respirator still going on. And that heart monitor still beating. That's right. You can bring Bill to look at Fred all you want. Amen. Fred, you dead yet? Look at the monitor. <laughs> you stuck. Stuck. Bound by the law. And you can't pull the plug on him. That's right. Is what? Ba the wife is bound you by know, the law. You know, this scripture going to cause a lot of men and women that go to church to go to hell. That's right. A lot of bishops now got to come out the pulpit because oh, yeah. one of the qualifications of a bishop, if he's married, yes. is the husband of one, one wife. wife. One so wife. if the Bible justifies multiple wives today, why only one wife for the preacher? That's right. You liar. That's right. You're a lying bishop. Amen. You're a lying elder. Amen. You're a lying evangelist. You're a lying prophet. That's right. You're a lying minister. You're a liar. Amen. The qualification of the... You better read Titus, this. Titus chapter 1, and we're right at verse 6. Says what? If any be blameless... If any be blameless... The husband... Of how many? Of one wife. What? <laughs> the husband of one wife. Your pulpit Bible-carrying liar. Amen. Now speak in tongue over that. O over that. Over that. This is a true saying. Uh oh. Now in First Timothy chapter three. Anything and then verse else one, is a lie. This is a true saying. What? Well, give chapter and verse again. First Timothy chapter three and we're at verse one. Yes. This is a true saying. All of you people that go to these churches, mm -hmm. where the preacher said the law spoke to him, <laughs> and he divorced his first wife, and mm -hmm. his first wife still living, mm -hmm. and he got another. He just lied on the Almighty God. That's it. I don't care if he's apostolic. Pentecostal, Hebrew Israelite, right. Muslim, I don't care. That's when right. the Bible talk, everybody got to shut up. Amen. Because I'm going to take the Bible over you. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. And I want to encourage all you viewers, Hallelujah. take the Bible over your pastor. That's right. Take it. That's take right. it. Go ahead, brother. Let them throw you out the church. Who cares? Take the Bible That's over right. him. That's right. I don't care if it's your daddy. Preach it, brother. Your daddy come to your house and you know your mama's still living, Preacher. which is his wife. Go ahead. And Betty's still living, which is his wife. Mm -hmm. And he's going to drive up now and come to his daughter's house with Sarah. Amen. Hey, hey, daughter, I want you to meet my new wife. The daddy, mama's still living. Yeah, but the Lord dealt with me. You are a liar. That's Hell a liar. dealt with you. That's right. Your flesh dealt with you. That's right. Let's call a spade a spade. Amen. 
Listen. First Timothy chapter three and verse one. That's what. This is a true saying. This is true. If a man desires, I don't believe nothing else but this. But this. This is true. This is a true saying. You can jump and shout and holler and scream and sit outside and pray if you like. <laughs> This is true. This is a true saying. That what? If a man desire the office of a bishop. Is your pastor a bishop? Mm. A bishop is an elder. That's right. That's right. Is your pastor claiming he's a bishop? Claiming. He, oh, he is? Mm. And he done divorced his wife and got another one? He do? He do. He do? This is a true saying. I'm about to read something true here. That's right. I'm about to read something true here. This is a true saying. I'm about to read something true here. If a man Give chapter and verse to them. First Timothy chapter 3 and verse 1. This is true. This is a true saying. If a man desire the office of that a bishop. That goes for if I got any undercover preachers here. <laughs> That's right. Undercover. Undercover preachers. Undercover. Because you know when I preach somewhere, a lot of men won't say they're a menace. No, no. They'll just say, I'm a guest. I'm happy to be here. <laughs> But I don't care if you are an undercover minister. You got a second wife, and mm -hmm. when you go back home, you're living in adultery, you pulled pit hypocrite. That's right. Preach now you can put your robe on tomorrow mm. and preach over this. My Lord. Preach over this scripture here. First Timothy chapter 3 and verse 1. Hear what it says. This is All what you All of you that got bishops that got more than one wife. Mm. He done married the second time, third time, fourth time. All of you that are watching, right. hear this. Hear this scripture here. First Timothy chapter 3 and verse 1. Says what? This is a true saying. That lets you know anything else that contradicts this saying is a lie. That's right. Because this is a true saying. If a man desire the office of a bishop. What? He desireth a good work. What is his qualification? A bishop then must be blameless. Yes. The husband of one wife. If he's married, how many wives he got? The husband of one wife. Two wives. One wife. Three. One. Four. One. Five. One. Six. One. Seven. One. Eight. One. Nine. One. Ten. One. Twenty-four. One. Twenty-three. One. Hut, hut, hut. One, one, one. That's right. Amen. That's right. You get this. A bishop then must be blameless, the husband of one I wife. I don't care if it's your husband. I don't care Preacher if it's your Christ. father. Preacher. It doesn't matter if it's your uncle. Amen. It doesn't matter if it's your grandfather. That's right. If the first wife is alive That's right. and the second wife he got or the third wife he got Go and he said he got her in Jesus' name Jesus because name. the Lord moved on him, mm -hmm. he was moved by the devil. That's right. This is a true saying. Because right here is true. That's right. If a man desired the office of a bishop, the devil got in his pants. <laughs> That's all. That's right. The devil's in his drawers. He's in his drawers. <laughs> That's right. That's make right. It so plain, you got to get it. That's it. What I would like to say, I can't say it. Devil. <laughs> yeah. That's right. The devil's all in your bishop drawers. All in there. That's all. all. There. That's right. That's all. That's all. That's what made him marry the second time. That's right. First wife is still living. That's what made him get the third wife and fourth wife because the devil is in his drawers. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Hear me good. This is a true yeah, saying. Yeah, 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 yeah. First Timothy chapter 3 and at verse 1. Give chapter and verse again. First Timothy chapter 3 and at verse 1. Now let me see you preach over this scripture. Over this. You can speak in tongue now if you got time. <laughs> That's right. We we'll take God. We're gonna plant your hills down with the Bible. That's it. I had no one taking his own working on this, mm. but this is a necessity today. Oh yeah. All these women getting duped into marrying one man. One man got five and four and three and right. five and ten and six wives. That's right. Taking members of the church wives and marrying them. Oh yes. Oh yes. Amen. Can't have no wife until your wife dies. That's right. That's right. You have to wait for your wife to die. Have to wait. She has to wait for her husband to die. Well, Pastor Jenny, that take too long. <laughs> Give me his back. First read Corinthians. that again. Read that again. Then Timothy. Mm -hmm. Then go back to uh, First Corinthians seven thirty nine because that? people want out. <laughs> That's right. Hey, Amen. I I, I I can't. I can't give you no more than what the Bible says. No. 
Now listen at this. First Timothy chapter 3 and at verse 1. Yes. This is a true saying. <laughs> yes, sir. If a man desire the office Glory of a bishop, God. he desireth a good work. Yes. A bishop then must be blameless. Yes. The husband of one wife. That's it. That's it. That's all. That's it. Now 739 in the book of 1 Corinthians. Back in 1 Corinthians 7 and verse 39. The wife is bound by the law as long as her husband liveth. Yes. But if her husband be dead. If her husband be dead. She is at liberty, at to, liberty be to be married to whom she will, she will, only in the Lord. Now, I can use myself as an example. If I die, yeah. then my wife got freedom to marry. That's right. It doesn't matter if she was Pastor Jenny's wife. The Bible gives her the right just like it gives you that right. That's right. And she ain't got the answer to the church. No. That's her personal business. That's right. If I die on Monday, she can marry on Tuesday. That's right. Someone said that's too quick. There is no Bible that no. gives space or time. No. No Bible. No. And nobody can say nothing. No. Well, she married too quick. That's none of your business. That's right. Someone said that don't sound right. Who cares? There is no Bible <laughs> that right. says she got to wait an X amount of days, no. minutes, weeks, months, years. No Bible. She is at liberty to the be Bible married. The Bible says she's free. To be married to whom she will. But what is the stipulation? Only in the Lord. She can't marry a sinner. Right. He has to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. Holy Ghost speaking in tongue, and in the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's it. She's only allowed to marry only in the Lord. Only in the Lord. If I die Monday at 12 noon, she can get married at, by 1230. Mm. <laughs> if she wants. If she wants. She is at liberty. The Bible says she's at what? She is at liberty. She's at what? She is at liberty. She's at what? She is at liberty. To be married to whom she will. Someone said, I don't agree with that. Nobody think about your feeling. I'm talking about Bible here. She is at liberty. She's at liberty. To be married to whom she will. How? Only in the Lord. That's something. That's truth. Someone said, for her to get married that quick, man, she must not love you. That's not so. No. That's not true. No. I know. I, I know. Listen, I've dealt with cases where men, wives die, and a brother loved his wife. And I, and I know he loved her. He got married, he got married again later on, and uh, he told the woman he married. It's funny, because the woman, he, the second woman he married after the first wife died, he, they all grew up together. Hmm. And the second woman he married, he, she knew him and his wife. They grew up together. Hmm. And he told her, well, I, I still love my first wife. Oh. Know what she told him? I expect you to. Right. You say sometime and some of these wife die or husband die, I'm a good man. I don't need my wife to tell me I'm a good man. I know I am. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Huh? That's right. Yeah, I know I'm a good man. That's I'm right. a very good man. Very good man. I don't need my wife to pat me on the back and say, oh, you're a good man. I'm a good man. That's right. And if I was a no good, rotten, slapping, bottling, all that stuff, yeah. then I can understand she falling out of love with me. Oh, yeah. Because the way I treat is no good. That's right. And I can understand if I died that she married someone else, and she probably will remember some things about me, but I can understand why she would want to forget me. Yeah. Because she would not want to remember all that abuse. That's right. But if I'm a good man, and I is, <laughs> and she marry another good, man, another good man, if that man is good, and I mean really good, mm -hmm. and she say, look, I'm not taking the pictures down of my husband. If he's a good man, he would respect that. That's right. That's In right. fact, he would encourage her. You know, leave, your, leave your pictures of him up. In fact, talk, talk to me about the way he used to treat you and love you and took care of you. Yeah. That man shouldn't be intimidated, and I'm dead. That's right. That's right. Think of it. That's true. Why in the world would you be intimidated for you're dead? That's right. I'm dead. What you going to do? Go to the grave and cuss me out? That's right. It would be the same way if some of you men today, your wife died, and you have a very good wife. And then you marry the second time. Listen, 
This is the mistake that a lot of people make. Mm -hmm. They'll be on camera too. <laughs> the mistake they make is this. If the wife died, very good woman, and that man married a second time, some of these women that you get, fellas, some of them expect for you to stop loving your first wife. And they'll tell you, I'm on the scene now. I want your love. Wait, wait, wait. If that's a respectable woman, right. she wants you to remember your wife. That's right. She won't encourage you to forget your wife that's because right. if she's a good woman, how are you going to forget her? Right. If that was me, I'd use myself as an example. God forbid if my wife passed, but I hope she never do. In fact, I hope she outlived me. But if she passed and I choose to remarry, well, I look like getting rid of her pictures and all that. No, I would leave every picture around the house. Listen, woman, come tell me. I can't take her walking through the house and seeing her. Do you leave then? <laughs> That's right. That's right. So you can ask me straight up. Well, you still love her? You think because if she died, my love died? No. no, I will love her always till I die. Amen. That's just a fact. Amen. And if I was to marry again, did that woman have to deal with the fact I'm still in love with a dead woman? Mm. But I would tell her straight up, That's oh right. yeah, yeah, I love her. I love her just as good today as I did yesterday and the day before. But she's dead now. Well, I'm in love with a dead woman. Yeah. You can't kiss her. Well, I can't kiss her, but I can dream about her. <laughs> How many women would encourage that man, remember your good wife? Yeah. I want you to remember. I want you to love her. Right. Always love her. Mm. And don't mind you sitting talking to her about your wife. Right. And she won't get, how can you get jealous of a woman that's dead? That's right. How can you get jealous of a man that's dead? Amen. Wow. So, brother, you know you had a good wife and she passed? Watch how that woman react when you talk about her. That's right. The one you talking about marrying, you didn't marry her yet. And she's like, oh, I heard enough about her, I heard enough about her. Look, man. You don't let no woman come in your mm. life and want to erase your good past. That's right. You don't let no man come in your life and erase your good past. That's right. If he's no good and she's no good, you don't have to worry about somebody else erasing because you'll want to forget him yourself. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Amen. That's a problem with a lot of Men, and then the second marriage don't work because she already got it in for your wife, dead wife. Well, how you going to talk to me about her? I'm tired of hearing about her. You're going to have to do something about these pictures. <laughs> Everywhere I look, she looks like she's looking at me. <laughs> Amen. My Lord. He said the same thing. Look, I don't like these pictures around here. You're going to have to do something about these pictures. And she's like, well, what, what you want me to do with him? Get rid of him. Burn him. Mm. He's dead now. Forget all about him. Mm. No good woman will forget about a good man. No. And no good man going to forget about a good woman. That's right. That's right. So none of you out there that got married mm. to a good man or a good woman after the first husband died or the first wife died, mm. She'll, should feel threatened. That's right. How can you be threatened by a corpse? Amen. Unless he come back and slap you. <laughs> I speak this because I've dealt with many cases like this, and I'm still dealing with cases like this to the present. Mm. Trying to teach men, you don't come in somebody else. Uh, house and uh, she just lost her husband and he was a good man. Man, you shouldn't mind that woman talking about that man. You should want to know. Tell me what, what it was. That's memory lane for her because she's still grieving. That's right. That's right. Wonderful, brother. Don't be
be so anxious to jump in the bed. Mm. There's a crushed heart there and a crushed mind. Go ahead, you brother. got that to deal with. That's right. If she's really in love with him, even if you married her 20 years later, 20 years That's of true. death is just as fresh as one day. That's right. That's right. Amen. I want to teach you and educate you. Amen. Amen. You think you're the new kid on the block. You're supposed to just take over. Man, you got a lot of you got a lot to learn. Oh yeah. It ain't just that easy with some women. It isn't just that easy with some men. That's right. Death hurts. That's right. When it's the right one. That's the right one. I have to put it that way. <laughs> For some folk, he's dead. He is? <laughs> Man, the moment they hear about it. Bill is dead. S Sister Susie, you, did you hear? Your husband died. What? Your husband died. Oh, wow. Oh, oh man. <laughs> so while she around you, she's just. <clears throat> when she go by herself, you in the mirror. Mm, yeah. Mm, yeah. Just as happy as you can be. Then at the funeral, come on back, all in black looking. <laughs> Amen. I ain't been pastoring 40 years for nothing. That's right. There's some men and some women. Death is true freedom for them. Yeah. They want out. Want out. The only thing they're keeping them in is the God word. That's it. That's right. Jesus preached marriage so hard until the apostles respond, oh, well, it's good not to better, it's better not to marry. Not to marry. Jesus laid it hard. Yes, he did. Very hard. Yes, so you, you have to take under consideration. It's a whole different approach. When you marry a man or a woman, and they was married before, and the wife died, and the husband died, you have a lot to consider. For love is as strong as death. Hear this. In the book of the Song of Solomon, chapter 8, and at verse 6. Yeah, a lot of folks don't know this is in the Bible. You have a lot to consider. That's right. It's more than, oh, well, I want to give her comfort. She lost her husband. Or I want to give him comfort. He lost his wife. Hey, it's more than that. Oh, yes. And you don't know the connection them two had? That's right. You don't know how intertwined they are? That's right. You really love that wife. That's a part of him that's dead. Yeah. Are you listening? For, uh, Song of Solomon, chapter 8. I hope I help somebody six. tonight. Amen. And many, many millions that are watching. Oh, yes. Because there's many that are watching that's faced with what I'm preaching now. Mm. Hear this. Song of Solomon, chapter 8, and at verse 6. What is it? Set me as a seal upon thine heart. Set me. As a seal upon thine heart. And as a seal upon thine arm. Yes. For love is strong as death. Love is strong as death. You know why? Love cover you. Oh, yeah. Just as death covered the body. Many waters cannot quench love. Glory to God, many waters cannot quench love. Neither can the floods drown it. Floods can drown it. If a man would give all the substance of his house for love. Yes. It would utterly be contemned. Yeah. Amen. That was the Song of Solomon, chapter 8, and that verse 7. Some don't know how to love. They like you. That's right. Some only love what you give. Right. So other than that, they don't love you, man. No. They love the materialism that you can supply them. That's right. So you as a person, they don't care two cents about. That's right. You as a woman, they don't care two cents about. No. They just love the bed. But That's you right. as a human, they don't love you. That's right. Some fall out of love. Some never been in love. Some don't know what it is. Yeah. They say, I like you. <laughs> That's right. That's right. That's why I tell folks, you want to know whether he loves you or she loves you, ask him. And you better prepare yourself for the answer. Amen. It may not be the answer you're looking for. Yeah. Some is the type they need to be told every day almost. I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you. I <laughs> what is that going to prove? If you're that insecure, you need to it's be insecurity. told. What is that going to prove? That's right. Never be the type of person where you need to hear it every day. 
because a time may come you can't hear it because of the condition that they're in. They can't say it. That's Neither right. can they show it. That's right. Are you listening? Song of Solomon, chapter 8 and oh, verse 6. Oh, this is good. This is good. God knows. Hear this. Set me as a seal upon thine heart. Set me as a seal upon thine heart. And as a seal upon thine arm. What? For love is strong as death. Jealousy is cruel as the grave. Oh, my goodness. Jealousy. Jealousy. It's cruel as the grave. It's cruel as the grave. The coals thereof are coals of fire. You know what a grave do to a body? Yeah. Disfigure it. Oh, yes. Dismantle it. Rearrange it. Make it unattractive. That's right. That's exactly the way jealousy, jealousy is. That person is emotionally and mentally disfigured. Mm. Their actions are unattractive. And they'll do anything under the sun to get attention. Everybody's not marriage material. Amen. It's like every piece of material you can't make a, a suit out of. You can't make a suit out of this wood here. No. Everybody's not marriage material. Some want it, but everybody's in marriage material. Don't know how to be a husband uh, or a father. Don't know how to be a wife or a mother. They don't have, some don't have the stamina, nor the patience, nor the know-how, don't mm. want to know. That's right. They don't want to be tied down. That's what marriage is, prison. <laughs> That's right. That's what it is. Someone say you make it sound harsh. I don't care how you sound. It is what it is. It is what it is. Marriage is prison. That's right. And your license uh, yeah, you're tied down to one, and that's like a warden. Amen. God is your warden. Yeah. And you're locked up. Locked in. Think of it. This is what I'm telling you. When you talk about marrying, you're talking about staying with one person until you get old and die. Die. God be looking in that face every day. Amen. Not get tired of it. That's right. Because some get tired of it. Some only love you when you're healthy. Mm. God help you if you get sick. Then the true colors will come out. That's right. That's right. I had a woman write me one day. Pastor Jennings, my husband is sick. And I want you to ask me, would you please touch and agree with me that he died? Mm. Man, I wouldn't even answer the letter. No way, no. Huh? No. <laughs> Want me to touch and agree, to agree. that he died. My Lord, my Lord. God may make, let him live and you die. That's right. Yeah, my God now. That's, that's right. That's why I tell you young people, take your time. Amen. Take your time, man. I don't care if she walk and she switch her hips sway so strong until she, she part waters. <laughs> She create waves on the asphalt in the street. My Lord. And you can hear the bongos of Africa. <laughs> boom, 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 boom. <laughs> no, sir. Amen. Woman, I don't care if he got a wad of money that mm. he can choke a whole dairy farm of cows. Mm. Don't marry a man because of what he got. That's right. Who says he's going to have it forever. That's right. You marry him for what he, he got, he may get in a, in a predicament, he lose it. Then what? Oh, yes. If she marry you for what you got, brother, and you lose it, you're going to lose her. Yes, she will. No, maybe it's all about it. She yes, is she not going to stick with you. She's not going to love you. She will love you depending upon how much you got. And when what you have starts to decrease, her love going to decrease with it. Oh, yes. And it'll be so easy for another man to come by. They got a bigger wad of money than you and lead her right out your house. Amen. Go back to where we were in the book of Isaiah. Back in Isaiah chapter 40 and at Let verse 6. Let me get six. ready to knock off now. The voice said cry. I'm crying. And he said what shall I I'm cry? I'm telling you. All flesh is grass. What are you? Grass. Black, brown, white, yellow, green. What are you? Grass. Short. Tall, fat, skinny, what are you? Grass. All flesh. All flesh is grass. And all the goodliness thereof is all as the, the flower of the field. Thereof. Is as the flower of the field. Is as the flower of the field. The, the grass withereth. That's what your flesh going to do. The flower fadeth. Your flesh going to wither, buddy. Oh, yes. Everybody's. Everybody. You're going to go to dust. That's it. And what? 
The grass withereth, the flower fadeth. Yes. Because the spirit of the Lord bloweth upon it. The spirit of the Lord blows on it. Surely the people is grass. Acts 2, 38. Then Peter said unto them, Repent. Hear this now. Amen. Repent. You that are visiting here, yeah, this is what God wants everyone to do. Then Peter said unto them, Repent. Repent. And be baptized every one of you. And be baptized every one of you. In the name of Jesus Christ. When you're baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, that's how you get your sins washed away. That's right. Then he promised that you'd be filled with the Holy Ghost. That's right. Speaking in other tongues that the Spirit of God give utterance. Anybody want to be baptized tonight the right way? Stand on your feet if you want it. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> them that are holding up signs, follow them. Follow them. All of you follow them. All right. We thank God for it. We'll be back tomorrow at 11 o'clock. We turn the remaining of the service of the service to the hand of Minister Lionel. Everybody rise. Let's close with a prayer. Oh, Heavenly Father, we say thank you, my Lord, my God. Thank we thank you for the message you have given to your apostle, Lord Jesus. This message that comes from the Lord, hallelujah, to prick our heart, Father, so we could learn how to serve you, Father, so we could walk this straight, narrow path, my Lord. We say thank you, Father, for the souls that rise to get baptized, Father, that you will fill them with the Holy Ghost, Father, and keep them in this way, Father, hallelujah, so they could be make it to the kingdom of heaven, Father. Father, we say thank you for tonight, Father, for this great blessing you have given us, Father. All these things we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. And the church say amen.